U.S. face, which is how to handle their finances. And many getting into debt not knowing how to break a cycle of bad finances. And here joining us now with how to fix that issue is Arthur Mark Hall. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Am I doing personal help this morning? Is that what <laughs> <you're doing? laughs> <laughs> yes, I will be calling you afterwards. Like, Fantastic. can you look at this? Good yeah. stuff. <laughs> yes, so obviously, especially for people like me who are younger, finances mm -hmm. are kind of a, a troubling thing to understand. And you wrote a book about this. Kind of give us some info about the book. But you know what? That's exactly why I did it. And that's why I think that uh, why I believe that God really laid that on my heart is a message from a biblical standpoint and, and having biblical wisdom in the way that we do our finances because no matter how much we have or don't have, we're, we're on an earth that basically takes money to live. And so we're all making money decisions each and every day. Uh, and so what I'm hoping to help people understand and to teach is, listen, there's a real good way to do this. And it's basically from a biblical standpoint in saying, listen, if we're handling our finances the way that God intended, the one who gave us all these things in the first place, uh, you're in good shape if you're following that advice. Absolutely. And you said 40 guidelines to help us along this way within this book. And from what, from what I read, it seems like more of a textbook and a guide to help you through the situation. Is that correct? What I'm looking for is to help. There's a lot of uh, financial books out there that may be a transactional type thing. Do this, do this, do this. What I'm hoping to do is to help people if you're going to change your behavior, you have to change how you think. Mm -hmm. And so basically what I want to help do is to take folks into the Bible to say, what does Jesus say about finances? Help us to understand that, align our minds to it, and then you're wanting to and willing to change your behavior to help get out of debt, to help save, and to help give more as well. And why is that stewardship such an important topic for Christians to not only know, but learn continuously learn more about? Well, I really believe that if you're handling your finances in the right way and, and in a godly way, that's really a part of your spiritual walk and, and a part of getting closer and closer to your Creator, the one who created you and, and created you for a purpose. And that's one thing I like to stress to folks is if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, you still have a purpose. Mm -hmm. God has a purpose for you. And I think by getting closer to Him, you understand better what He wants you to do, what He's asking you to do, and what He created you to do. That's where you find this whole thing is all about finding contentment, finding peace, and finding that true joy that we try to fill our lives with so many other things when this is what we really need and what we were made for. Absolutely. So you're talking about purpose and what we're made for. Yes. That goes along with talents. And then with those talents, you get your money. So how do we cooperate those two things to manage that? That's just it. It's a lot of this, what we're talking about is finance, but it's not just money. It is every gift. It's every talent. It's every piece of knowledge, every relationship, every day and minute that we get that, that, that is on loan to us from God is basically something that he's looking back and saying at some point down the road we're going to be held responsible for those gifts that we were given. How did you handle those? How did you work those? And did you, did you work those in a way to, for God given purposes and for my kingdom? And I believe that if we're living like that it's all about focus and perspective. Are you living for yourself? Or are you living for another reason and for your creator? Awesome. And then obviously with Christianity, think of the church. How can someone, if they're looking, if they're not married, they want a sense of community to kind of <clears throat> reinforce this financial literacy. How does the church play a role in that? You know, and some are better than others with the message, and some are better than others in basically first teaching the message, but are they teaching it correctly as well? Because I know when you start talking about money in the church, I can see the eyes rolling immediately. <laughs> what are we purchasing? What right. are we selling off? And if it's taught that way and only taught at that time, it's going to be seen that way of giving out of guilt or giving for the wrong reasons. And that's why I think I want you to have your Bible out while you're reading through because I'm, this is what Mark says. I want you to go back to Scripture so you can see wh what does Scripture really say about how I should. You can go to my website, stewardshipmindset.com, stewardshipmindset.com. But if you search, it's, it's pursuing spiritual wealth, 40 principles that make your life richer. Fully available on Amazon and, and on actually next week, just a, a, a tease here. Uh, if you're a Kindle uh, person, next week should be able to get a, a free download uh, Monday through Friday of next week. I will be uh, there. Right. Okay, there you go. <laughs> So Stay go. pressed on that. We'll have more information about the book and everything mm -hmm. you need to know on our website, but we're just about out of time. Thank so you, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. We'll be right back.